Hello everybody, it's your pal Jonah here, and I'm sorry it's been so long, I've been busy with, um, college, obviously. That's a thing. That's happening. But anyway, we are already a few weeks into my favorite month of the year, and that is October. I love everything about October. I love the weather, I love the trees changing Trump tree, trees, trees changing color. I love the way the leaves on the plants with wood change colors because I can't say change and the word trees in quick success, quick success, quick si I can't English, okay? Either way, I love everything about fall, the weather. Did I already say that? Now I need to start over. I love everything about October. Let's just leave it at that. Now, of course, one big part of October comes at the very, very end. And I don't know why. I wish it came sooner. But that is Halloween. I love Halloween. I love scary things. I love scary movies. I love being scared. I just love scariness. Fear? Fear. I, I guess I should have just said that. However, there are a few things that I am absolutely stone cold terrified of. Like, I can't even handle them. I'm not afraid of a lot of things, okay? But these few things just like absolutely mortify me. And there's like no good reason behind them. They just scare the crap out of me. And I don't know why. So I thought I'd share them with you in this list of things that make me wet my pants. <laughs> now, the first thing I want to mention are bugs. Now, there are certain bugs that I am not the least bit terrified of. I'm not scared of most spiders. I'm not scared of most insects, so long as they remain on the ground. That said, there are a few bugs out there that absolutely mortify me. Those bugs specifically are wolf spiders. I cannot deal with wolf spiders. And I have a good reason behind this, okay? When I was like eight or something, it was Halloween had actually just passed. So it was early November and we were cleaning up all the decorations because my family has like this big Halloween party every year and it's super fun. But that's beside the point. Anyway, we were cleaning up afterwards and downstairs I was helping clean up all like those little spider rings and I saw one on the floor. So I went to pick it up. It wasn't a spider ring. It was a live wolf spider this big, not even kidding, and it jumped on me. I screamed at the top of my lungs like a little girl in a horror movie, and I bolted up the stairs, like, you know, slapping my hands all over my body, even though I knew it wasn't on me. I don't know why people do that. They just, like, for, like, minutes, and you're like, it's right there. Why are you freaking out? But I did that, and it scarred me for life. From now on, I cannot handle wolf spiders. The second kind of bug that really terrifies me are spider crickets. Now, if you don't know what these are, it's basically like the devil himself crossed a giant spider with a jumping cricket and thought it would be a good idea to put them everywhere. We get these in my basement all the time, and if I see one at the bottom of the stairs, I refuse to go down to the basement. I will not step foot in that basement if there's one at the bottom of the stairs. I just... I just can't do it because not only are they terrifying looking, I mean, look at that thing. Is it up here or is it up here? It will be in one of these corners. I'll put it in in post. I can't see it right now because that's not possible. But they are absolutely terrifying. And the worst thing is they jump and you never know what direction they're going to jump in. They could jump away from you. They could jump on you and they're completely harmless. So like, there's no reason for me to be scared of them. They're completely harmless. They're just freaky looking. I mean, like, they look like demon spawn. They're literally the spawn of Satan himself, okay? I'm absolutely certain that Satan himself created these things. There's no way God created that thing. Number two on my list of embarrassing fears is one that I'm sure a lot of you have, and that is the fear of needles, also known as trypanophobia. Trypanophobia? Trip? It's up there, however you pronounce that word. I cannot deal with needles. Like, I really want a tattoo. I want two, actually. I want one here, and I want one here. But I have no idea how that's going to work out because I don't like needles and a tattoo is seven needles repeatedly going into your body. So I don't really know how I'm going to deal with that. But like, it's so extreme. Like to this day, I refuse to get any sort of vaccination that is not 100% necessary. If it's even a little optional, I'm like, pfft. That's okay. I'll just have hepatitis C for the rest of my life as long as I don't have to get a shot. I won't. And like... I feel bad about it sometimes because at Liberty here, they have like the Red Cross here all the time for like a blood drive. And I'm always like, I really want to give blood, but that's needles. 
they don't like needles. And like, I, I feel like so bad, like all my friends like, I gave blood, it was so great. And in some of my classes, you get extra credit for giving blood. And I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> that's not happening. Third fear on my list of fears is perhaps my greatest fear. That is heights, otherwise known as acrophobia. And now, unless you're new to my channel, you will know that I am absolutely stone cold terrified of heights. Like, when we went to the Tokyo Tower in Japan, which is the second tallest building in the world, I was, like, close to tears. Like, no joke. I was so terrified. My best friend the whole time was like, Haha, this is worth the admission just to see you hyperventilate. And I'm like, stop! This is scary! It's not fun! I hate heights. But, like, that's a normal thing. What's weird about it is, like, I'm terrified of heights, but to an extent, I like being high up. For one, I love roller coasters, but that's because like you're strapped in and you're not very high for very long. You go up and you come right back down. You're not like up high for a very long time. Drop towers, on the other hand, or these swingy death machines that they have at many amusement parks now, are absolutely off limits. I cannot do them. I hate them. I'll go on them if I'm like with a big group of friends and they all go on it. But if even one person sit sits out, I'm like, ha, I'm hanging with you. I ain't doing that. And another thing, like, I like being high up, too, to, like, an extent as well. Like, whenever I study, I prefer to study, like, up on a balcony or, like, on a ledge. Like, my favorite study spots around Liberty are this ledge at the front of Moss. I mean, it's not that high up, but it's pretty high. And then, like, this building over this lake that I just sit on the edge of. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed up there, but nobody's told me not to go there, so I do it anyway. So that's why this fear is very weird, because like, I don't know what the peak is of like, the highest I can handle, aside from a roller coaster. But if I had to take a guess, I would probably say my like peak is probably around 75 feet. Now that's just like a rough estimate, but like, I hate cliffs. Like when we go hiking and there's a cliff, it just bothers me. And I think the reason is, to be completely honest, is I have like a very active imagination. And like, what I think it is, is it's not so much the heights that bother me. It's more, I have a fear of like falling. Like for some reason in my mind, I just picture like a freak accident where I just like whoosh off the edge of the cliff and fall to my death. Is it just that I'm afraid of dying? Either way, I don't like being more than like 70 feet off the ground. So number four is another very common fear, and that is the fear of mice, or moosophobia, which, now that I say it out loud, just sounds like the fear of moose. Now, I kind of have an idea of why mice absolutely terrify me, and that is when I was really young, like six or seven, we had this infestation of mice in our house. Like, I remember I was in the basement playing video games, I think, like this mouse ran across the floor, and I like flipped out. I like spread it upstairs. Again, I was slapping my body like crazy, but even though the mice wasn't even like remotely close to me, it's just something you do when you have like the heebie jeebies. You just lose control of your arm like some insane dinosaur, just like. Aah! And so that was one incident. And another incident was I actually had this dream. And to this day, I remember it very vividly. It was a really realistic dream. I was laying in my bed, and my dad came into the room and he said, Hey, I've, ca I've caught all the mice and he had them in this big bag and as he was like walking into my room he tripped on this like toy on my room and the whole bag of mice fell on top of me and I like tried to op like put my covers over but it didn't work so like the mice were running all over me and I like woke up like freaking out and it still felt like they were all over me. So like now whenever I hear like mice running or like I see a mouse running or like I hear them squeaking I just picture that and I just like freak out. Finally, on my list of fears, we have one that is completely inexplicable, no traumatic instances behind it, no logic behind it whatsoever, no idea why it terrifies me, terrifies nobody else that I can think of, but it's, okay, so this is a complicated one. It's the fear of being in the water next to a man-made object. Not, not the fear of being in the water, I'm totally fine with being in the water, but like, if there's like a buoy, like 10 feet away from me, I freak out. And I have no clue why. It makes absolutely zero sense whatsoever. And I don't know anybody else with this fear. Like, maybe there's probably at least one other person out there, 
which if there is, I would like to meet them and know why they are afraid of it because maybe it's for the same reason, I don't know. But the idea of being in the water terrifies me. Like even thinking about it, like ugh, gives me chills. And like, I have no idea why. It's so weird. It makes no sense and I don't get it. But it's a thing, that's a fact. And it's super weird. Like this one time, me and my friends went boating in this lake near my house called Lake Anna. Now Lake Anna is a cooling lake for a power plant nearby. So there's one part of the lake where there are these big power lines that go over the water and they're supported by these giant concrete pillars in the water. So my friends had this great idea, hey, there's a ladder going up that pillar. We should go up to the top of that and jump off. And everyone's like, yeah, that sounds great. And I was like, that sounds really fun. I mean, it's like cliff jumping and they were like a good 20 feet above the water. So like, it would have been super fun. But as soon as we got close to it, I was like, I don't think I can do this. It's so weird. I could not bring myself to get in the water next to those pillars. It's so weird. Like in my mind, I know that there's nothing underwater, but like you, since I can't see it, like I know it's, it's one of those things where like, you know, it's there but you can't see it, which makes it terrifying, you know? Like, you may not be necessarily afraid of wasps, but if you know there's one in the room and you can't see it, you're automatically scared of it. So I think it's similar to that, like, I'm just scared of the unknown. Maybe all my problems be summed up to a fear of the unknown. Who knows? Wait, who knows? I don't know if I'm afraid of the unknown, which makes it an unknown, which makes me kind of scared of it, which makes me scared of being scared of it because I don't know why I'm scared of the unknown. Oh, I just doomed myself to a big swirling pit of unknowns, haven't I? Either way, I don't like being in the water next to man-made objects. That was a very weird tangent and long explanation for something that really didn't deserve it. So there you have it. Five fears that I probably shouldn't have shared on the internet forever. I feel like every video I've ever made has like a small twinge of regret and it's probably something that I never should have put out there on the internet for everyone to see forever. But you know, whatever. I only have 64 subscribers right now, so those 64 people, please don't judge me. If you're watching this in the future when I have like 4 million subscribers, again, don't judge me. Either way, it's out there. There you have it. I mean, I could not post it, but then I'd be out a video and I need to put one out there because I won't put one out in 3 weeks. And I really don't feel like making another one. So, yeah. I don't really know where to go from here. So as I was re-watching my last two videos, I realized that I never did the anime recommendation that I said I was going to start doing at the end of every video three videos ago. Whoops. So I'm going to pick back up that trend and hopefully I won't forget it again. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh excuse me. Something came up with that. It's angry. Where's, where's my water? I have one in here. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I don't, must have ate something, I don't know what that was. So the anime I want to recommend for this video is one of my all-time favorites, and I actually consider it one of the best anime of all time. And I haven't seen it in a really long time, but I recently had a friend of mine watch it, and that just like made me think about it again. So that anime is Erased, or Boku Dake Ga Inaimachi, which is a really long title. So Arase follows a young man named Satoru, who lives in modern day Tokyo with a strange power. Every time someone dies within his vicinity, he's sent back a few minutes into the past to be able to stop that death from happening. So one day he comes home to find his mother murdered with him as the prime suspect. And he's unexpectedly sent back 15 years into the past to solve a string of kidnappings and murders that happened when he was in elementary school that eventually led to his mom's death. So yeah, it's really like mind-blowing. It's one of those like thinking animes. It's really good anime to binge watch too because every episode ends in like a huge cliffhanger and it's only like 12 episodes. So you can easily watch it in two days or if you watch anime like me, one day. So it's really, really, really good. The art style is excellent. The story is so good. The character development is so well done. It's it's really good. You, you should just totally go watch it. It's on Crunchyroll.com. Again, not sponsored, but I'm getting there. Erased. Go check it out. Even if you're not an anime fan, I can almost guarantee you will like it. Because it's very, like, not... It's a very normal show. Like, it's not weird like other animes. Like, 
it's a simple, well, it's not a simple story, but it's a single story over 12 episodes, and that's it. It's about a character and a story. It's not that complicated. It's not super weird. It's very Western in its design, meaning like it's not like super anime-y. So if you haven't seen an anime before, I would definitely recommend starting out with this one. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked what you saw, make sure you let me know by hitting that like button. And right on next to that is that big red subscribe button. So make sure you hit that and hit that little bell so that you're notified every time we upload a new video. For now, this is Jonah signing off saying see you next time on Jonah Entertainment. Bye everybody. So the first one. The audience plays a highly rewarding game of how gay can this possibly get with ice scanners. Fake. That's so fake. It is actually real. What? It's called Yuri on Ice and it's one of my favorites. What? It's so good. You guys have heard me talk about this show all the time. I have a shirt.